Okay, I finally broke down and purchased an SD to IEC device. Before I explain why, just what is an SD to IEC device? Put simply, it's just a storage device that uses an SD card to transfer information over the IEC bus, which in the case of the Commodore 64 is the same port your disk drive plugs into in order to load programs up. So why purchase this device when I already have a 1541 Ultimate 2 and the Ultimate 64, which already can easily read ROMs from flash devices? I've always been interested in the SD to IEC device, but until now I had no good reason to make the purchase. One of the advantages of using this device is that with a peripheral add-on, they are also compatible with not only the Commodore 64, but the VIC-20, Commodore 128, and the Commodore Plus 4. But what really pushed me into finally making the purchase was the recent release of the new C64 operating system called C64 OS. An SD to IEC is essentially required to run the operating system. So I set out to locate an SD to IEC device. I looked all over the internet, finally settling on one from the future was 8bit.com. It's called the SD to IEC Plus. On the site, you can choose your power connectors. If you use the USB power option, for an additional charge, you can power the device without any additional connections. The less expensive option is to use either the user port or tape port to provide power to the device. I figured I'd use the tape connector to save a few dollars, as well as I was thinking I probably would not be using the device with a tape drive connected up. The site also lets you choose between a gray or blue version of the device. I chose gray simply because it looks similar to the 1541 color scheme. The device is priced at £47.99 plus shipping. What I'd like to do now is take a tour of the device explaining what all the buttons are and how they work. I will also demonstrate how to program the device address. I will demo the command options in Commodore BASIC as well as with action replay fast load options. This is my first time playing around with some of the commands so we can learn together. Jumping ahead, I had downloaded this mini tool partition wizard so I could format my SD card as FAT32. And then I'm copying a couple of ROMs onto the SD card into a few directories so that we can play around with the SD to IEC device. And then here I'm showing the tape adapter and you'll notice that it is facing up. So it has to be plugged in in that direction in order to provide power to the SD to IEC device. And then I'm gonna plug both of the ports in and plug in the cable into the IEC port right there. And now I could power on the Commodore and it will have power to that device. One thing we need to do is plug in the SD card. And you just got to make sure that the SD card is facing in the right direction to in order to plug it in. Yeah, that way. That way. <laughs> Okay, here I'm showing how we can change directories. I don't have a fast loader in yet. I'm just using the standard Commodore commands. And, he, and here you can go CD and then you can say from the root and then you can use an asterisk. So we say B-E-L-O asterisk and then close one. And then I can get a directory and then you can see the contents of the directory are the two files there. Well, actually there's three files there because I had pressed both buttons down when you press both buttons down on the device, that creates that autoswap.gen file, which then allows you to press the, the first two buttons and you can switch between the directories. And then you can load the program if you wanted to from here, once you're in the proper directory. And all I was trying to demonstrate here is when it says to insert side two, you just hit the button and then hit the space bar for this game and you are now playing the game with the disc swapped. And that's how you swap the disc is between those two. You have a forwards and a backwards on those buttons.
And I know it might seem repetitive, but I thought it would be a good exercise to just go ahead and demonstrate again. Changing directories into the below the root folder and then tinkering around and pressing the buttons to change, to go back forwards and backwards in the directories. So you hold both buttons down, same time, and it, the both lights flash, and then you hit button, and you can switch forward or backward after it generates that autoswap.gen auto file. You can notice we're in one folder here, I hit the button, and now we're in that weird wacko folder on below the root, it has it messes up, disk, disk 2 is kind of a weird format. And then when that happens, you have to sort of reset. And you can reset it by hitting that black button like I just did there. So instead, we'll go into the Turrican folder. And you'll notice that the uppercase characters look weird on the file structure when you copy them in. So I just thought I'd you uh, just not have to type those weird characters and just type in the command directly by inserting. Oh, shoot. Now I'm into the Turrican folder and then I did a listing and I'm hitting both buttons to generate the auto swap dot gen. And then you can see now I'm in side one right there, hitting the button. Now I'm in side three, <laughs> hit the other button. See what, see what side we switch to. Side two. And then I hit reset and we're back to the root. So that's just kind of experimenting around. In this segment, I wanted to demonstrate how to load a cartridge from the Ultimate 64 automatically. So you can go over to the CRT folder that I have on my flash drive and you can hit Commodore C, like Control C, and that places that, that file on the clipboard. Then you can there's a flash directory and you can go to that carts folder and hit Commodore V to paste it in. And that's a really nifty thing. I didn't know that you could do that until I started experimenting around with this SD to IEC. Then you wanna go over to the cartridge specific settings and then change the default to the action replay cartridge and save your settings. And then once you do that, you'll see this screen every time you power on the device or your, com your computer. And you just hit F7, you can use the dollar sign and then you can use the at sign to do various commands instead of the open 1, 8, 15. And then in this segment, I just wanted to demonstrate we can do some of the same things that we were doing before, but now with the shortened commands using the action replay cartridge settings, you can use the at sign, you can use the dollar signs, and here we're changing directories, and you can use asterisk, and it's just a little quicker to navigate around with the cartridge for the SD to IEC. And you see there's how it looks when on that disc too. I mentioned it looks kind of weird. But it's the same sort of things where you push both buttons to generate the auto swap file and then you can switch back and forth between the directories. I did experiment around with trying to get to the root of the folder. Sometimes I could get it to work, but then sometimes I couldn't. And ultimately, you can just press the black button on the device to, to go to the root folder, just like I did there. Then I was just going to change directories into the Turrican folder. There might be an easier way to switch directories, but this is just the way I figured out how to do it using the instructions that came with the SD to IEC device. And then I was going to just demonstrate again, pressing both buttons on the device 
and then switching back and forth between the various directories. Here you see side one, here you see side three, push the button again, here you see, I believe it'll go to side two, etc. And then here I'm going to go back into the below the root folder and then I just wanted to demonstrate how to actually execute the program or to start up a program using the action replay command. All you have to do is put a percent in front of a folder and then hit enter or in front of a file name and it will load that program for you and automatically and run it. And I was just showing that and that's how it started up. And then in my final segment here, I wanted to show how to change the device address. And you can do that with your standard basic commands here, open one comma eight comma 15. And then in the instructions, it shows that the eight at the, at the beginning, the eight at the beginning there, I have an error there. That's your current device. And then that nine is the device you're switching it to. And then to write the command, there's another to write it out and save it to the device so it remembers it, there's another command you, you type in here. Open one, comma the new address, comma 15, comma quote, xw, colon, close one. And then that, now your device, even though I hit the dollar there, I'm about to hit reset. Now the device is set to device nine. So if I do dollar here, it's thinking there's nothing on device eight. So if I load the directory for device nine, now I have something. Now, so that's how I switch. And then all I'm doing here now is switching it back to device eight. I just wanted to demonstrate that you can switch the addresses, the device address on the sd.iec card. Anyhow, that is my video. I, I'm just experimenting around. I don't know everything about the device, but I am enjoying learning about it. And I think it's a nifty little device. I, I'm having more fun than I thought I was gonna have with it. So thanks for watching and I'll catch you on the next Gray Defender video.